Curry. And these are the recommendations. Number one, the committee recommends that food manufacturers clearly label products which have received third party certification. Now you see, this will give consumers a choice. If meat sold in supermarkets, restaurants, cafes, RSLs, butchers and the like are clearly labelled as religiously slaughtered, then we'll get a true indication of what Aussie consumers really think. If halal labels start appearing on Nestle, dairy products and food spreads, do you think sales will go up or down? Now let it be truly market driven and give us a choice. Number two, the committee recommends that the government through the Department of Agriculture consider the monitoring and compliance of halal certification of meat for export and becomes the sole signatory on the government halal certificate. That's a good idea. This rule will remove monopolies, excessive charges, excessive profiteering. The government will set cost recovery fees and contracts to halal certifiers. Now I suspect if the big dollars aren't there to be made then the industry will shrink quite dramatically. If Islamic countries require certain certifiers to inspect the meat, well they can do so at their own cost, not ours. 1982 Royal Commission into Red Meat found or had a recommendation that halal fees should only be about cost recovery and not for other Muslim purposes or uses such as schools, mosques and charities. Well, surprise, surprise, those findings were ignored. It's time that you, the Australian voter, spoke up and held the government to account. Number three, the committee recommends that the government, through bilateral and multilateral forums, promote a greater acceptance of whole country government-led halal certification. Now, I mean, it's either halal or it's not, right? No. Either way, Muslims can argue about that amongst themselves and stop expecting all consumers to pay for it. One government stamp for export and domestic purposes, cost recovery only, I mean that's fair and reasonable. Those who need halal certification still get it without all the fuss. User pays. Number four, the committee recommends that the government consider requiring certification bodies to register their operations under certification trademarks. Do you know why? It's because there are no regulations for domestic certifiers. They can set up without regulation or qualification. That has to stop and there needs to be an industry standard. Companies are none the wiser and are currently paying halal fees on products that Muslims know are already halal, such as honey, nuts, grains, fruit and vegetables. The inquiry also received submissions about dubious practices and pressure placed on manufacturers and retail outlets to comply even though they were already halal. Number five, the committee recommends that the government consider requiring that halal certification of goods in the domestic market comply with the standard agreed for export. I mean, it really goes without saying, but hey, sometimes it does need to be spelled out, doesn't it? No more taking advantage of Aussie consumers. Number six, the committee recommended that the halal certification industry consider establishing a single halal certification authority and a single national registered certified trademark. Oh, it's a little bit repetitive, but it's, it's necessary. This will go a long way to dramatically reducing the profiteering, meaning many certifiers will have no incentive to continue. And that means you and I will no longer have to support an industry that we find offensive and insulting. And number seven, the committee recommends that meat processors clearly label products sourced from animals subject to religious slaughter. At the moment, there's a loophole. Coles, Woolworths, Audi, etc. can say that the meat they sell is not halal certified, even though it has been slaughtered halal. See, a cow, a lamb, a chicken, whatever, can be slaughtered halal with fees paid, but then if it's packed, transported, or displayed with pork or another haram product, or if more fees are not paid, it's not considered halal certified. If this recommendation is implemented, it won't matter whether the end product is halal or not. It means that consumers can choose whether or not they want to support ritually slaughtered meat. I suspect many will not.